What is going on guys? Sanks Bile here coming back at you with another video. Today we have more of the 49ers franchise and I tweeted today on Twitter of course if you guys do not follow me the link is in the description twitter.com slash bangle designs. I tweeted huge something 49ers what did I say exactly? Hold on. I said um let's see huge in all caps so you know it's serious Huge video for the 49ers franchise likely going up today. I don't know if this is being posted on Saturday when I posted that tweet, but here we are recording on Saturday, and this is going to be a huge episode. Maybe not necessarily in time, because I don't think the length is going to be that crazy, but there are monstrous, monstrous changes being made to the 49ers franchise. Change number one. I'm going to be implementing a new set of sliders. Now, I'm not sure what those sliders are going to be yet, and that change will come in Season 2. And currently, we are in Week 10 of the 49ers franchise, and it's no secret that this franchise has taken so long and it's been so drawn out, but um, things are changing, and I think changing for the better. So, along with the new sliders being implemented... There would no longer be 49ers franchise week or season whatever, week whatever. So season one, week five. That's no longer going to be a video. I mean, like, it's that is a video on the channel. But for the future, there's n never going to be a season two, uh, week five video. Never going to be a thing. Instead, what I'm going to be doing are episodes. So there will be 49ers franchise episode 15 and now that could be season two it could be season three season four whatever another thing we will no longer be playing all 16 games of the regular season going through all 17 weeks what will happen now is i will play four to five to six games per season and based on how often i upload this series that's probably going to be a decent amount of time um but that's not only for progression of the series, but I think it's just going to be a bit more fun for me. Because those have been my favorite franchises too in the past, where you kind of skip around and play the games where you're in the mood to play them and still build the team. So that's going to be a thing. So in this Week 10 matchup against the New York Giants, we will not be playing it. We will, in fact, be simulating to the end of Season 1 in this video. We'll be simulating to the playoffs, in fact, where we do have a shot to make it. We're currently... Uh, second in the NFC West. Seahawks still have a game to play. They could they could win and take a game on us depending on when their bye week is. But there are a lot of very interesting potential developments. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a free agent. We are not going to be doing franchise uh, free agency in the offseason today. That will be next episode. But this episode is extremely important nonetheless because we have a ton of decisions to make. We're going to be simulating to the playoffs now. And I do want to say that I'm sorry for taking as long as I have with this series. It's just been, I've had a lot of other stuff going on, and this has kind of, you know, been put on the back burner as far as content goes. And I know a lot of people really, really like this series because, you know, more personality comes out. It's way more easy to bring it out and rebuild, you know, make funny or re remarks and responses and whatnot to things that happen in the game. And a lot of people really, really love this series as it looks like we have missed out on the playoffs, finishing 6-10. and 10. We won all but one game. But I know a ton of people love this series, and it's going to continue, and I think this will actually make it go way faster. So let's go ahead and see um, the results of the games after the Giants. So we lost to the Giants, then lost to the Seahawks after our bye week, beat the Bears 37-31, and then lost out at the Texans at home versus the Titans and the Jaguars, and then at the Rams in Los Angeles. So, not a great finish to our season, but the fact of the matter is this was not a playoff caliber team, and we were winning games anyway. So, I know some people are going to be against what has happened here, but I think this is going to be for the best. We'll check out the stats. C.J. Beathard obviously played quite a bit, 609 passing yards and 81 attempts, 3 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Pass completion percentage was 55%, and then Jimmy G came in and was a little bit better. 2,000 yards on 296 pass attempts, 9 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Keep in mind a lot of that was the CPU. 
but he is a decent player. 26 years old, quick development. Rushing, Carlos Hyde, 1,342 yards, 14 touchdowns. Really, really good season for him. Uh, but I'm not sure if he's in the long-term plans of this team. That's just the reality. And he dislocated his hip because I didn't have injuries off during simulation. That was a pain. Pierre Garçon led the team in catches. We didn't have a lot of catches due to the time of the games, which I might extend. But uh, Aldrey Robinson led our team in touchdowns with five. Marquise Goodwin had four. No 1,000-yard receiver. Surprise, surprise. Blocking. Looks like uh, not that many sacks were let up. And then defensively, Navarro Bowman led our team in tackles with 95. Tackles for loss would be 13 from Ruben Foster, 10 from Solomon Thomas, who also picked up seven sacks, which led the team six for Elvis Dumerville, the 36, 34-year-old left end, formerly of the Ravens and Broncos. DeForest Buckner had four, Tank Carradine had four. Interceptions, four for Ruben Foster, Navarro Bowman, and Richard Robinson, three for Jimmy Ward, two for Eric Reed, which I believe were both pick sixes. Forced fumbles, two for Bowman and Buckner. Fumble recovery is one for a handful of players. And then defensive touchdowns. Yeah, two for Eric Reed and then one for Elvis Dumerville. It was a decent season. However, we were dead last in the NFL in offensive yards. However, defensively, we were 12th, which is obviously much better. As far as yearly awards go, the 10-6 uh, and six Packers and their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, takes home the MVP award. Russell Wilson at number two. Eli Manning. At number three, AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Tom Brady. AFC Defensive Player of the Year is Paul Puzlesny. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Aaron Rodgers. I doubt we'll see any 49ers as we don't. And Defensive Player of the Year is Bobby Wagner. Again, no 49ers. Offensive Rookie of the Year for the NFC is Mitchell Trubisky of the 312-1 Chicago Bears. Christian McCaffrey in there. Evan Ingram of the Giants. 49ers, we have Matt Breida. At number seven. And then defensive rookie of the year is Jared Davis as Ruben Foster finishes in fourth. Solomon Thomas at ninth. AFC offensive rookie of the year is hold on. Leonard Fournette of the eight and eight Jags. Kareem Hunt at number two. Interesting group of players in here. And then defensive rookie of the year is Miles Garrett. Jabril Peppers at number two. That's interesting. And of course, no 49ers as it's the damn AFC. Best quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. This is, of course, all NFC. I don't really want to go through all this, but you get the point. Nobody won anything for the 49ers. That's just the way it is. As far as XP goes, Marquise Goodwin has 15K. Did he make the Pro Bowl? Marquise Goodwin made the Pro Bowl. That's very odd. We'll probably boost a lot of route running there if we can. And then defensively, um... Where even is Ruben Foster? Why is he all the way down here? IR. He has quick development, though. Did he get that? Or did he just have that? He might have just had that. He broke his wrist, which is also unfortunate. But not a tremendous amount of XP for any one player. But that'll happen. It is what it is. But, guys, we are going to the off season. It was not a great season because it really hasn't been a great franchise series. It's just been so, so delayed. I think the episodes that we did have, and it was a lot of figuring out what we wanted to do with the series, but I think they were pretty good episodes. Just unfortunately, uh, it was so drawn out, and it took a really long time, and it wasn't as great as I wanted it to be. Ruben Foster still a broken wrist. So I am going to upgrade these players, and we're going to figure out just what we want to do for the rest of this series. The offseason's coming. We have some free agents. Carlos Hyde is our most notable free agent in terms of overall, but we also have guys like Aaron Lynch, our potential franchise quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, Eric Reed. What do we do with Eric Reed? 26 years old, has slow development. Did he get slow development? Or did he just have that? Made a Pro Bowl in his first season and has been nothing since then. Do we re-sign Eric Reed? What about Tank Carradine, Kawan Williams, Daniel Kilgore? A lot of these players have started for us over this past season. We're going to have a lot of holes to fill, and I want this to be a fairly realistic series. So we can't go out and get 20 first-round picks or sign the entire free agent class. We're going to have to make a bunch of really important decisions. Let me know what you guys think we should do down in the comments section below. 
to usher in this new era of San Francisco 49ers football. Should be an interesting one, and I am excited. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed as Carlos Hyde is injured too, dislocated hip. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.